Hello everyone, uh, today I'm just going to talk about the Aussie Rocks Project's big development board and uh, all the features and what you can do with it. So the idea of the board is just to speed up your setup time. So first of all, as your crystal, as your voltage regulator, things that you usually usually have to set up on your breadboard before you start. Uh, as well as that, we have a 100 nanofarad capacitor and a 3k3 resistor that's for uh, power smoothing uh, you also have a reset switch which uh, you might set uh, up on your breadboard you don't really need that you could tie it to ground or in the software you can um, tell the pick that you're not going to be using it and if you do that we've supplied a jumper here so we can disconnect this if you have the if you have the reset disabled in the software then you can use the whichever pin it is uh, as an input or an output pin. Uh, normally you connect this jumper over either the 18 or the 28 pin uh, which is written below the jumper here. You connect them for either microchip you happen to be using. And on, on the board you can only use either the 18 pin or the 28, you can't use both at the same time. Uh, and uh, also with the clock, you can remove the uh, remove the jumpers if you if you've programmed or set it in the code so that you don't need the uh, the crystal oscillator and that you're actually using an internal oscillator. You can just remove those jumpers there, and that frees up more input output pins, just like with the reset button. Um, as well as that, there is a connection for an FDDI cable along here, and uh, you can choose between 18 or 28 pin uh, communication depending on which microchip you're using. The reason for that is that the, the RX and TX pins on the 18 pin chip are on, I think it's on port B, whereas on the uh, 28 pin it's port C. So if you, uh, if they were connected together, then there would be interference between the two, uh, between the two port pins. Like for if you were using the 28 pin, basically the the two pins on port C would be directly connected to the two pins on port B, which you don't want. So we have jumpers to either connect for the 18 pin or the 28 pin chip. Uh, the connection is for an FTDI cable, so a cable something like this. It's a simple USB one, this is a 3.3 volt one. And all you do when you want to do your serial communication is plug that in there and plug that into your PC. Very simple. As well as that, there is a connection here for in-circuit serial programming. And that's again another uh, very useful feature. It means you don't have to remove the microchip every time you want to reprogram it, which uh, can be rather annoying, especially if you keep removing the chips and then the pins start to break on the back. That's that can be a bit of an issue. So what you can do is get a a, a wire for your programmer. Most programmers would have a in circuit serial program and. Uh, uh, header pins or row of header pins and so wire like that this one's just a USB one just plug it in and plug it to the computer uh, this is a very cheap one this is only uh, $14 or something on eBay uh, it's a little bit buggy but you know for the for the time it saves removing the chip and that it's pretty good so this is one you just plug this in here I think it's like this and you'd have your microchip in there and you just uh, hook that up to the computer and put in your or just tell it to program the chip using in circuit uh, serial program and that would mean if you had say if you had your chip here and then you had a couple of different boards stacked on top like for instance just this uh, there's an LED board with some switches that I made I'll just stick that on there so instead of you having to remove all of this you could just uh, 
dirty now. There we go. Instead of you having to remove this to get your microchip out from below it, you can just plug on your your programmer and program it and then as soon as it's finished programming your code should run on the chip. You might have to reset it, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. Um, so that's the most of it. And the, the spacing of the pins, they're all set up so that you can make your own uh, boards very easily. So it's 2.4 or 2.54 millimeter spacing, so it should suit uh, any breadboard that you happen to be using or any strip board, any any sort of um, kind of development board you want to make one with lots of circles instead of strips this one on circles as well as uh, see if I get one with strips on it yes yeah, see this one's a strip board it's all the it's all the same really the the pins are set up so that you can just uh, or the female headers here they're set up so you can just build your own boards and plug and play very easily that's that. Um, there was one mistake on the board. The positive and the negative of the DC connector are um, are backwards. But to remedy that, uh, when you get the board, you'll have this connection here. It's very simple. So basically, you just plug that in, and then this should be uh, right for pretty much every every 2.1 millimeter DC connection you happen to have. Uh, with the, uh, see on the board the inside pin is accidentally ground and the outside is the positive where in most cases the inside pin would be the positive and the outside would be the ground so that remedies that You can buy the board in three different uh, three different manners. You can simply buy the PCB on its own and put the parts on yourself, which can be useful if you already have most of the parts. You don't really want to be buying more than what you need. Uh, you can buy this and then pick whichever parts you need to complete the board on the website individually. Or you could do like like this board. I I uh, just used parts that I salvaged, salvaged from old boards to create this. Most of the parts in that are just recovered from other boards. Um, you could also, if you wanted, you could set it up with uh, a socket for your crystal and your uh, capacitors so that you can plug in whatever uh, frequency of a crystal you want and whatever capacitors so the minute this one's a 20 megahertz crystal in here uh, but like you could very easily replace that with a 4 megahertz one and change your program so that you can do that that's another option you have you can also uh, permanently make it a 20 megahertz chip so that's what that uh, buying the single board would suit you better you can you know you can uh, uh, modify the board to suit you whatever way you want to have it set up oh, just while I'm thinking of this the, uh, the LED, the resistor for the LED uh, you can work out the best resistor yourself uh, it says 120 on the board but you know you might not want to that would make the LED very bright it'd be uh, using a lot of power if you wanted your battery to run for longer you'd put a bigger resistor there uh, LED would be dimmer but uh, you'd the whole device would last a bit longer. Uh, another thing you can do: this final board has a 3.3 uh, volt, 3.3 volt regulator instead of the 5 volt regulator. So that's just another option you can do. Then you you could use a 3.3 volt FTDI cable. That just happens to be a 3.3 volt FTDI cable. That's that. Okay, so that's that's the first way you can buy it. Second way you can buy it is as a complete kit. You have your wire, you have all your components, and you have your PCB. All you have to do is solder all the components together. And it should have the should work out okay for you. 
and the final option is obviously you can buy it uh, fully assembled and it will have been tested with a, with a, a microchip and a, probably with this uh, LED board just to check that the, that the microchip actually runs on the board that you have. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is just a quick demonstration of how the board works. So we have it plugged in here to our DC connector, into our little wire for changing the uh, positive to negative and negative to positive. Have a microchip in there, the uh, PIC 16F627, and on top we have a little little board just with LEDs and switches. And at the minute it's running the first tutorial program, which uh, you should be able to find on the website. And what I'm just going to do now is plug in the programmer and switch to the program from the second tutorial. Okay, so now we're running the second program, or the tutorial from the second program. So if I switch, push this switch, we should see the LED flash. Okay, so that's the sequence that they follow, and if I push the second switch, we should see a different sequence. Yeah. Okay, so clearly the programmer has done its job. It's programmed the chip while it's inside the in, inside or inside the uh, development board under this LED board, and that's the idea that. Uh, Basically, that the board just speeds up your your setup time, so you've you know you can get straight to actually testing your program instead of uh, instead of spending the first half an hour or whatever setting up all your different little bits on your breadboards and having all your jumper wires all over the place. Just plug it into there, plug in your programmer, and there you go. Uh, one thing I'd say is use quite good uh, power supply, maybe. 12 volts or something because uh, the voltage regulator is it's pretty cheap and it's not a very uh, low dropout I think if you go below 7 volts you start to lose voltage and the programmer would need uh, probably a, a fairly close to 5 volts or a very good 5 volts uh, that's another thing the, the board doesn't take power from the programmer's cable so you do need to be plugged in when you're doing that and the same with the serial interface, it doesn't take power from the serial interface so you do need to be plugged in while you're doing that too that was just to minimise the amount of components on the board just to make it that little bit cheaper well that's all I think I can tell you about the board so uh, thanks for watching and for any of you who buy the board uh, good luck with your projects, I hope it works well for you thanks, bye